didn't say at that time. I didn't say back once again as an opening line because I'm showing that I am capable of growth, which is an interesting segue into tonight's topic, isn't it, Justin? It is. I'm back once again. <laughs> I cursed you and your feeble mindedness. We're going to have to weed out that kind of behavior. Yes, we're not going to water that. Listen, I'm going to prune you down to size if you don't watch it. Oh, uh, I'm not even going to. No, I have no more, no more puns or jokes about gardening. I've planted the seed, so I'm sure it'll come out with one later on. It'll just sprout out of them. And that pretty much <laughs> ends my entire repertoire of gardening jokes because, folks, and I mean, I'm not on my own here. Gardening games. I mean, they suck, right? Well, this is actually quite good. But, like, come on. It's this, surely to goodness, Justin, a gardening game is in much the same vein as a sports-based game. Oh, look, I'm doing something that I've no intention of going outside to do. Okay, yeah, not everyone's into gardening, not everyone's into outdoor sports. And as a board game player, yeah, you probably wouldn't give too much time to those other two activities. But if you look at this purely on mechanics alone, it's quite a devious free game. It's quite a devious big game, I should say, because it comes in a rather large box, which is rather heavy. It's got millions of tokens and cards. And, well, you have the game there. Have you looked at it? No, um, yous, yous were quite devious in, in how you have done this because you know that I am, in actual fact, despite my jovial and open demeanour, I am a hard, bitter, cold-hearted cynic. And usually things that involve floral displays and love and kindness are met with a shun from me. So I have, I have done nothing more than the instruction on in the box said, which was, please don't set fire to it take off the plastic and wait for <laughs> Justin. And and I have done this. Now, well, I, I will grant you this. I have looked at the box and I, I will well, go this far. It is a hefty big box and it does look very pretty. I will grant that. Well, let's be honest. I mean, both of us, we, we have both done many gaming conventions and the majority of people at a gaming convention are, are, are guys and guys don't generally pick up board games that have flowers on the cover or, or gardens or anything like that. Usually it has to have something exploding on the cover or, or a ninja or, or, or something, or robots, you know, or 40K. You know, Blood, death and violence. any of those things would, would, would pique your interest. But gardening, not so. Well, now, now I, would, I would say this, that if I was walking down the aisle of, of any event, and something this size and literally this this bright caught my eye. The, the trick is, I think, there there is an agricultural flair to it. You look at that picture and think, oh, is that like that Agora or whatever it is? Is this one of these farming kind of games? Mm -hmm. And I think, yes, I would lift it up. And the minute you flip it over, and I'm going to do that for the boys and girls at home. The minute you flip it over. Now, I don't think they've made a big enough thing of the picture here because... My first glance at this was, right, okay. And then when I kind of looked closer, I went, oh, actually, that, that looks kind of interesting. What's go and that then made me go. So I kind of feel like the picture should have been a bit bigger because the board is kind of interesting going on and it looks to be some sort of marketplace type thing. Put me yeah. in mind a little bit of that tile game that you like, Azul. It's very much in that regard like Azul, yes. You have a central board in this. Pretty much like in Azul, you get a central board. Difference being in Azul, you're drafting tiles onto your player board. In this game, in Botanist, the center board is the market, and you are walking around the market, picking up different flowers as you go, and trying not to get ones you don't need, which will have a negative impact on your score, but trying to build sets and get patterns, which you can use to accumulate points or special orders throughout the game. So... There's a bit of interplay where you're trying to take things off the market board and prevent somebody else from getting those before you, or maybe just take them to, you know, 
take what you need or else just take what you don't need to stop somebody else from getting. So there's two ways of playing. Shafting people, Very much you mean? Brazil. Yes. Ah. That's what I'm trying not to say, but that's exactly what it is. No, I, I'm completely on board with the concept of shafting other players. Now you see you've perked the interest because if there's if there's that scope to be against each other, because you know me, I enjoy a good cooperative game, but I also enjoy nothing better than a good shafting now and again. And if that opportunity arises in a in a board game context, that's 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 a treasured moment when it works in your favour, especially when it works against well, Roger. <laughs> yes. Well. What I will say about that sample board, yes, it's the market. All the players are on that board at the same time, and we all have player cards as such. This little yellow one here is where you're standing in the market, uh -huh. and these are the ones that you can pick up from that grid. Now, am, am you I have to, to use the card. Am I allowed to open this when you're talking? Yeah, go ahead. No, no, keep... Use the card you need. Yeah, in the orientation that you are facing the board. So this card could be beneficial to me this way around. It could be more beneficial to the person on my right. It might be more beneficial to the person opposite me. So it's going to actually affect not just how you play, but how it interferes with the other people playing. And they will change as you go through the game. Okay. Um, I'm, I just so, have... like a zool, but it's got that extra level of sort of pattern recognition, if you will. Okay. This thing's built like a, a garden shed, this oh, cardboard box. Yes. It weighs a solid metric ton. But never, never <laughs> mind. I, I thought the weight was just contents, but the weight seems to be actually part of the box. I mean, this thing is solid. Yeah. I mean, not only that, look at the tiles there. They're very, very thick uh, and very high quality. They're, they're like... Really? They're like three or four mil, aren't they? I think they're about four mil, yeah. I mean, they're, they're quite high quality, decent tiles. So, well, I mean, okay. that's because if they're plastic, I can make my own tiles, but uh, they are very, very, very good. Um, now, everything in the box is quality. What you've said, the words that you've used, the things that you have described yeah. to me have had me go on. Okay, I'm, I'm kind of interested. I've got to say, from going from that level of detail to a box to now the, the detail of the what I presume are the flower cards. Yes. I'm not blown away here. I'm, they're, they're nice. Oh, they sorry. are nice. There's a nice linen finish on them, which I'm, you don't generally have. Oh, you're talking to tokens? I'm sorry. talking about yes, tokens, okay. sorry. I'm talking yes. about the tokens, sorry. Um, and I realise maybe maybe I'm unfair here, Justin. I realise tokens are just tokens, but they don't really pop. Okay, um, I'll go with that. They, they, I think they are working nice on them. It's not as vibrant as it could be, I will say, but they're still very good quality for what they are. I'm I'm being picky. I'm just, I'm just be, you know, I can't, I, I can't help being the, well, no, I can't help being the cynic. Box liked it. Back of it, when I looked at it, I thought, mm, yeah, okay, that's interesting. The first thing I see when I open the lid is, is artistically, it's a step down. It's those tokens. Yes, they look like flowers, but lots of things look like stuff. I was, I don't know, I was kind of expecting something a bit more, I don't know, jazzy. Sorry. Okay. So the only thing I can knock it on, they could be more vibrant, could be brighter. But other than that, they, they serve their purpose and they serve the purpose very well. Well, what we're probably up against here, and and folks at home, then that's that's where I have to qualify my criticism. Not yeah. being a flowery person, not being a botany state person, not really traditionally being into those kind of cooperative, growy, naturey, farmy games. So there's probably like unfortunately like the ten percent block of default RAM memory is devoted to <laughs> unjustly. Okay, fair enough. This this board spangly. It's really big. It's really nice. Again, it's very very high quality. Very very thick. Very uh, very glossy. 
oh, because I'm using a virtual background, it's kind of it's kind of cutting out on me. I was using a virtual background to be all gardeny, you see. So no, that's, no, no, that's, no. that's just vanishing. That's just vanishing. I'll try and put it onto the big camera, folks. This this isn't going to fit under the camera. Um, it's huge. It's, it's a six fold cord. It's it's quite big. Yeah. Now I can get. Force. The box is slightly bigger than A4, so it's it's six slightly bigger than A4 sheets. Now even the lights reflecting off it because it's it's actually extending out into the area that my light covers. Okay, I've I've got I've got nearly nearly sort of two thirds of the board on here. So what I'm looking at is some sort of sunflower track. I've got a market plot in the middle, and then there's like a card yeah. rack and a score rack, and there seems to be some sort of little. So that everybody plays that from a different orientation, and you're trying to lift things off from a different select pattern, which can either help you or hinder somebody else. So it's not a cooperative game at all. It's very competitive. Okay, I I, I do like the game board, and I like the artwork on the game board a lot. That's it's it is now that the thing though. This this is huge. This is not going to be. <laughs> You're not going to play this in your London two-bedroom department. No. This is a two-table at game night type of game. How, how many players is this? Four players. And now don't forget, now you have to add four more boards to this as well if you're doing a four-player game. And they're, again, the size of the lid of the box. So it's getting even bigger. So you're going from a six-fold board plus four more. So you're... I mean, each of those folds, you're, you're looking 10 of them on the table if you're going with a four-player game. Oh, geez. Plus an area to, to hold your tokens as well. Yeah, I mean, there, your cards. there we go. There's, there's what Justy's talking about. Now, you, you've had an impression on the camera there of the size of that, that six-fold board. Yeah, he's holding up the same picture. Um, so that's the size of the box. And there's, for scale, there's my hand, which, of course, you all know the size of. Um, something that's to scale. <laughs> There we go. There's an Apple Pencil <coughs> product placement. So Apple Pencil fits in the box almost twice lengthwise and, and once, in, once in like a quarter sideways. That's what a stupid form of measurement that is. I've just, just realized this stupid. How many <coughs> Apple Pencils long is that game? I have to decide if it'll fit on my table at home because obviously I've measured it in Apple Pencils. I think they brought the Apple pencil measurement in for 2020. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. What What's going on here? This is multilingual rules. That's nice. Um, yes. You have everything in there. You, you, you know, Spanish, French, English, the whole block. There's a couple of other ones in there as well, to be honest. I just put them in the bottom of the box straight away. Okay. Um, there's there's right here. The rules appear. Oh, yeah. The rules appear to be German as well. The rules appear to be four pages. Yes, not a lot of rules for a lot of content. Yeah. Um, so honestly, you could condense the rules down a bit. Boys and girls so, at home, there's the rule book. Okay, page one, page two and three, and page four. Um, four and four pages. And to be honest. Page one is just set up. Yeah. Page two and three is how to play. And the last page is just little bonus actions and scoring. So really, it's two eight four pages and it's nicely color coded. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um well I didn't say that, but we always find a way. We're very good at breaking games. Well, I was about to say you've just said it's very nicely color coded. What do you mean it's very nicely color coded? Different sections. Uh, I mean, the section on tiles and green, market cards and red, fulfilling orders, it's magenta. I mean, you get a different colored paragraph for each different rule. Right. And if I'm colorblind? So if you're colorblind, uh, tough luck. Unfortunately, yeah, that's, you just have to scroll through. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a bit annoying. It's um, not in Braille either. No, there's no it need to, to be, be there's no need to be pedantic. <laughs> but in the common in, in common practice nowadays is is color awareness of, of yeah. board games and components. 
I mean, the tiles are different colors. Fair enough. If I'm if I've definitely seen color, they've all got different pictures on them, so I can tell yes. them apart. Um, but I do know from chatting to a few other people that when there's been a lot of color coded things, one that it still remains a problem, even though they've tried, is of course ticket to ride because the symbols are quite small. Um, so yes. Well, I think I think what's different in this, if you have different colors of text, that's harder to discern. Yeah. But the fact that entire paragraphs are different colors and they contrast green to red to yellow, that's probably going to still look different enough that you can jump to a different section or find out, weed out, if you will, a different rule. Yeah, it's just what strikes me is I've at least one friend that literally, you see red writing. Red yeah. writing's invisible to them. Yeah. It's so, still black writing. It's a red... But there's what I'm wondering. I would, I would so, literally need to sit down with that person and go, right, can you read that? Because does the red actually blank out what they, you know, I don't know enough. Red. Don't know enough. Yeah. Um, yeah, don't don't tell me off for 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 having having a a question. That's what this is about. It's you know you send me a flowery game. Don't expect that I'm just going to sit here and suddenly start growing the begonias or or yeah. flowers. Turnips. <laughs> yes, that well. No, I know that's a it vegetable. Would be turnips over here. <laughs> I know that's a vegetable. Right. So we've got four gamer boards. <coughs> Yes. <clears throat> so each player has a unique game board and every player has a strength and a weakness. There's certain flowers which benefit some players oh, and yeah. some other players don't need them and so on. And as they're picked up through the game, you have to plant them in your rows. So the game is split into thirds, first column, second and third. And you score as you go along, and you're trying to lay down flowers that match the colours of the tiles in the sequence on each of your plots in your garden. Anything you don't use can go into this area over here, and they will like generate negative points. If you don't have any in there, you will get a bonus for having no sort of unused flowers. Other unused flowers during the game can actually be used for fill orders as well. So if somebody does shaft you and gives you, you end up with a handful or a bag or a bucket of flowers you don't need, you can on the sly fulfill other orders. So you have to try and be aware that you may be doing someone damage, but you might also be helping them unaware. Fair enough. That that's that's a nice trick. I like the fact of the the penalty and whatnot. Of course, the other thing that I can say, and that you know, this is this is where I always reinforce: don't listen to my opinion. And that's probably why it's you and me, because you're you're Mister Positive and I'm Mister Pessimist. Um, of course, the reality is that uh, the the manufacturer, the I've forgotten the name, Aggie, isn't it Aggie? A G I E. I I'm not sure how you pronounce it. I think it's Aggie. 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 Aggie Games. Aggie Games. As far as I know. They're sold out of run one. Yes, I I think gone. I think it's literally only Rory at the Red Knight and maybe a couple of other like little independent stores that have any copies of this left. So I don't know. A run must be at least what a thousand copies. A thousand, maybe more if it's a big enough company. Yeah. But yeah, no, no, no less than a thousand copies. Yeah, so it's minimum. There's a thousand copies out there, which probably means that. In reality, nine hundred and like fifty of those, nine hundred and sixty of those are sold, and and I would say probably sold very happily to people who like floor games. But of course, the, what's striking me here with was seeing this more than anything else, and and hearing your description of it, it doesn't really matter that this is about flowers. This could be about CDs. This could be about T-shirts. This could be about underpants. It's, this could easily be about salvaging the junkyard to try and build a machine. Yeah. It's the same mechanic, and it's a very good mechanic. Yeah, that's that's what it seems to be. It's a clever, it's a clever kind of self puzzle game with the opportunity yeah. to better your own nest and harm your opponents if you can. But you run the risk of a wee penalty if you kind of overstretch yourself. Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, I've said it before. You brought it up today, and I'll say it again. It's very, very like Azul in that regard. So, I mean, I, I sold you on a Zool last year, just come up to Christmas, I think it was, um, where you looked at it and you went, I'm not too sure, then you played it and straight away thought, that's actually pretty good. Well, Same with this. I, I think, you know, being pessimistic, you right, you'll look at it and go, it's not really for me, but you'll play it and you'll realise fairly quickly how devious you can be, how sneaky you can be, and 
I think you'll actually quite enjoy it once you actually sit down to play it and you realize how good a mechanic it is. No, I, I, I can see where you're coming from. And you're right. I mean, with Azul, I looked at Azul and there was there, there was really nothing that visually, it, it didn't push any buttons. You kind of looked at it and I went, it's a board and some tiles with a pattern on them. That's exciting. And you quite rightly said, no, no, you've got to play, look, have a go, sit down. And yeah, I think within about three turns, I was like, oh, this is quite captivating. I, I'm I'm enjoying this. And by the end of it, I was like, oh, no, I'm buying this. Now, in reality, I probably listened to you because you'd done the very same thing with Parks. You sat me down with Parks, and by the end of the night, I'd ordered Parks. Um, so you... Well, have you finished the game and you'd ordered it? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, because and, and you, you're you normally fairly shrewd. So, I mean, if you're saying to me, you know what, botanists, this is one we have to play, I, I'll play it. And and unlike some of the others who would say to me, oh, come on and play, play the game, Andy, please. And I would go, well, all right. You at least I know, well, all right, Justin's, Justin knows me well enough. He's not going to tell me to sit down and play something that, you know, halfway through I'm going to flip the table. And, this was pants. I don't know why I wasted my time. I hate you. You're all rubbish. Um, and how many times I mean, have you given me stick for it? You brought up another weird game. Every, every, what is it? And then I coax you to play it. And then you go, actually, you know what? I'm putting this in that category. Yeah, I mean, to be fair... Every game you bring is normally what. Um, what I've since kind of discovered is if it's in a box, it's probably going to be okay. If it's in a card deck, it probably sucks. That that seems to be loosely how, you, how you, your selection of games works. In a box, yeah. yay. Card game, mm, mm, yeah. no. Yeah, the no, I'll, I'll, that's fairly good. Yes, I have to agree with that. But yes. anyway, sorry, back to botanists. Yes, yeah, sorry, back to botanists. But it's all it's all context. This this is allowing yeah. you people at home to realise that Justin has varied tastes and that his opinion is influential, and that I'm a grumpy git, but I can be swung. <laughs> you can be swung by a good mechanic in a game, <laughs> or by the neck. <laughs> <laughs> right, just looking back at the components here I mentioned it briefly earlier the actual cards you get for this there's a lovely linen finish on them which is they really went above and beyond here they didn't have to do that I mean, most cards now just come as a bog standard printed card but there's just such a nice finish on them they're like playing cards they're quite thick quite well produced again the quality of this is just second to none really is now, folks, in reference to the previous part of this conversation where I mentioned Justin and his love for crappy card games, what he's just said about most games not going that extra mile, that's more a testament to his purchasing than the actual experience he's had with card games, to be honest. Because as you and I all know, one of the first upgrades most games do is linen. But yes, these do feel... I'm, I'm shuffling these, and these do feel gorgeous. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I could just sit now. Remember I wanted to sit and shuffle the Azul tiles? Yes. Yes, I could just sit here and finger these cards. <laughs> um, <sighs> they're, they're, they're a very nice feel. They, they are. They really are. And they're, and they're very nice. And now I'm going to look at them and see what they do. What do these do? <laughs> <laughs> are these the market ones? No, these and ones have flowers on them. They all seem to have the same flowers on them. Oh no, they've got different flowers on them. They don't. You, you really need to give them a good shuffle when you open them. <clears throat> yes. Again, they're sequential. Never just open a box and expect to play it. I've done that. I've fallen in that trap before. Oh, no, Everything's no. sequential in there. <laughs> yeah. And then I also remember we've shuffled decks of cards and then read the robot says, do not shuffle the decks. <laughs> Yeah, these ones are good shot. <laughs> uh, no, the question was the the ones with the pretty pictures of the flowers that I didn't really like at the start, which are starting to slowly grow on me. Um, hey. Yeah, slip that one in there. <laughs> yeah, just thought I would add that cutting. Um, what are these for? They are for your your orders that you can do if you end up with extra flowers you don't need. They're the ones that you can compile 
Okay, I'll lift one to the top here. Um, two yellows are purple and a blue. Should I ever have a spare set of two yellows, purple and blue? I can cut them in uh, and get them out of that wee plot of lands, which will give me negative points when anything's left in it at the end of the game. Oh. So that's like your sort of secret sort of, you know, way to accumulate points. So you could play a card which forces me to pick up maybe two yellows, knowing that I don't need any yellows, but I could have that little order on the side and go, well, hold on, I can use them. And, you know, ha-ha, I can actually get points. You thought you were doing me over. Okay. <coughs> yeah, they were nice. And then this these, this other deck is the, the market deck. How does, how does that work? Is that, this is where you're standing and these are the flowers you'll get? So, yeah, this, so they're all like a Tetris layout shape. So if I'm playing this one and I'm at the bottom of the board, I'm standing here and I can pick from the one on one, two beside it and one in front. If the person to my right is playing it, they have the same uh, team oh. shape, but from a different orientation. However, I could be standing on one of those squares and they can't lift the one on one. Or if this is too close to the side of the board, I can only lift the L shape and not the T. Oh. So you have to be aware of where you're standing in the market. And also who else is standing around the market. Oh, that's... Is the, that's... Over the edge. Yeah. It's quite sneaky. That's quite clever. Mm. And they are, you're right, they're all Tetris shapes. Do -do 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 -do. Um, <laughs> right, okay, that is adds... It, is so, it growing on you now? Yeah, so <laughs> basically the market in the middle gets a random distribution, I presume, out of this cloth bag. It gets it a does. random distribution of flowers every market day or whatever. Yeah. And then yeah. I have to play these every time I go to the market in order to actually... Attain. So I'm looking at the board, trying to guess which flowers I need, hoping that I've got a yep. card that's going to get me into the position I want them, but at the same time not being affected by you guys already being at the market and taking those from me. Yes, and then also to add to that, if this was your character, on your first row you need to get a yellow, a blue, a red, a yellow, and then a blue again. If the order you get them in doesn't match the order here, you have to flip them over and the flowers become withered and you'll score for them. So you actually have to collect your row in order to, right? So that is very much yeah. like the, the tile aspect on the wall yes. in, in the Zool. Going back to Zool again. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong. I mean, I you know, if anyone's watching this and going, oh, they keep referring to this as Zool an awful lot. I don't have a problem if a game echo and quite often for for just me it's a case of there's there's a flavor that echoes. It's not necessarily the same mechanic, and we're not suggesting that. But if we can feel that kind of similarity, then there's a comfort factor of, oh, yes, I kind of have a better idea of how to approach this game now. Um, yes, for the record, I'll be perfectly clear. It plays quite differently from Azul. It just has that sort of hint that if you like Azul, I think you'll love this. So I was, yeah. I was near. Like, I think you're right, Sam. It's not that flavor of another game, but it plays different enough to make it unique in its own right. Yeah, because I was nearly going to say that the center board with the flowers, I was almost originally thinking that it was going to work something like uh, Kadenka, you know, where, where, where they shifted yeah. around as you took stuff. But, no, no, they're static in the middle. Yeah. yeah, no, that's fair enough. And then there's little cardboard people. <laughs> yes, these are your characters for the market. If you move around that grid, um, wherever you stand refers to your market card. Yeah. So this indicates where you are in the market, and this indicates ones you can pick in the market. So I noticed there, Justin, that we've got little round people versions and little stand-up people versions. What the little this? round ones are for the score track. On the big board, you'll see along the top, there's uh, three or four rows. That's the score track. Okay, and they think of everything. And then there's they the little standy bits as well. Yeah. Bottom is obviously packed out. That is... That's oh, it's, it is only flat cardboard, but it's again, it's fairly thick cardboard that they've padded out the bottom of the box it, with. Yes, it really is. Everything in it is, is very good quality, very high, very high quality. Okay, well, listen, since and since, also, yeah, lovely cloth bag to keep all the tokens in instead of a plastic one. So, now, we've got a wee bit extra there. One, <laughs> one little comment on the back of the <coughs> box, it's a little white bag with botanist written on it. It is, and um, yes, I have the same here as you, just a, a, a standard black cloth bag. But still, it's it's better than a plastic bag. It's better than no bag. 
I was just Seven wondering, four. was there a reason had it been like some sort of special edition that got that or I don't know. I know this this I believe went to Kickstarter originally. So it could have been a Kickstarter. Maybe, maybe they got a printed bag and the retail version we get the the, the black bag. But uh, do you know what? It holds the tokens. Oh no, no, listen. My my reason for saying it is Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy out there in, in YouTube land watches this and thinks, ha, huh, that wee Andy, he talks a lot of crap, but the big lad just there, he knows what he's on about. That looks like the game for me. Me, Shawnee, Shona and Star are going to love playing that after we're done the shopping on a Friday night. And he goes out and he buys a copy and he opens it up and the first thing he's going to do is go, where's my wee white bag? I want my wee white bag. You get me white white bag or I'm going to knock your... And big lad. So, for the point of view of clarity, do we, Jimmy? Uh, the white bag doesn't exist. It's a, a black bag, and there you go. That's what it is. I can't speak for the other thousand copies out there. <laughs> All I know is that we both get a black bag. But yeah, <laughs> you and I getting a black bag is really not a surprise. Um, so, Justin, in the last couple of yeah. minutes here, okay, I'm going, to, I'm going to treat you like one of one of our interview guests, all right? Because you, I am treating as um, witness for the defence, <laughs> and I'm going to say to you, okay, Big Jimmy's granny is on the left with you. She's getting off at the next floor. She's away to buy a game for Big Jimmy for his birthday because he's just got out and she wants him to have something new to focus on rather than getting back in with that bad crowd that he used to hang about with. She says, have you any recommendations? Sell her on Botanus in the 60 seconds before she gets off the lift. Go buy a zoo. <laughs> okay, no, I'll start again. <laughs> 50 seconds. Oh, oh, you put me on the spot here. If you like a game that has competitive strategy and can be quite sneaky towards the other players, if you like a game where you can get one up and you're constantly trying to get one up before somebody else gets one up on you, if you like a game that's going to keep you interested from the first round to the third round, and you're not going to be able to identify who's in the lead until the last round of the game, this is the game for you. You'll notice, folks, that not one of the words that he used there involved the concept of flowers. Um, now the key because is... at the end of the day, it could be any artwork on it. No, it doesn't have enough. to be flowers. I focus on the mechanic, and the mechanic is really good. Okay. The prosecution, then, in terms of myself, I cannot fault what sits in front of me here in terms of quantity and quality of the build of the product. It's a very attractive looking package. It's got a lot of stuff in there and it looks really, really well put together. The prosecution would however point out that if flowers are not necessarily your thing, you could be put off, but that would be a mistake because clearly there is a mechanic here that doesn't need flowers to be an issue. They are a resource that you're buying and trading and selling in order to gain points and win. So look beyond the theme. The part that the prosecution can't shy away from is though, this is table hungry. This is a big game and I feel it's a game that's bigger than it needs to be in every respect. Yeah, you're not playing this on a TV tray. No. Um, so it is one to bear in mind that the picture on the back is small. That could mislead you into thinking that this is small. If you do not have good sized table space, you need to really think who should be buying this in your group and do they have the space for it to play. Otherwise, you know what? Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a go. It wouldn't be the thing that I would run out and buy. I Realistically, would. like you say, on space, it's it's a six seat dining room table kind of game. Yeah, and there's there's no getting away from that, and that's no. that's <laughs> not a complaint about the game, but I think it's a factual thing that needs to be brought home to folks. I certainly was sitting here prior to we started this, waiting for Justin. This is sat in the corner with me most of the week, and I've got to admit, I kind of looked at it with with a snide look every so often, because gardening related games and myself do not have a good history 
I've tried. I've been there. Um, mm. That being said, just his recommendation and his tie into other puzzle related games. Yes, there's enough in what he has said that would swing me. Certainly, he is a two thumbs up, I believe, Justin. Yes. Yes, very Do, much so. Justin is a two thumbs up. I'm a comfortable one thumb up. Okay. But I will qualify that my thumb down is more to do, I feel, with the overall size of the game, limiting its audience slightly. So that's well, a, a measured let, Let's run the numbers on that. Between that, between both of us, that's three thumbs up out of four. 75% is a good score for a game. Well, considering that, considering that two thumbs up is the highest score we can normally get <laughs> any game, that's, that's kind of the Wii Gamer standard is it gets the two thumbs up times two, times three, times four, whatever you like. Um, the well, fact of interest, this on Board Game Geek at the minute is round about 6.4, I think. I checked out about a week ago. I think it was 6.4. So, you mean, I think above six is a good score. Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, God, they don't need our opinion for it to, to matter. It's already sold. He can say what you like about it. You know, you could you could take it outside and burn it. It's not going to change the fact that at least a thousand people own a copy. And that in itself is a testament that if if a shipment's worth of people want to run out and buy it, that's a winner. You, you... I mean, let, let, let's even put the mechanic and all aside, which is something I don't generally do. But no, you do not. Walk, walking around Essen last year, there are a lot of games which more so now, they're, they're really pushing artwork like this. I mean, and, and people are just looking at the covers and going, I'm having that. They're judging the game by the artwork. Judging I the think if you're cover. one of those people that just bought this because of the artwork and then you played it, you're not going to be disappointed. So the artwork really does help in that regard. But at the same time, if you're one of those people that's put off by the artwork, you're probably going to miss out on a good You are going to miss out on a good game. So it's, it's a hard balance to get right. Because if you go into like a games expo or whatever, you're talking what what percentage of the games expo is guys? One too many lots. Yeah, something like that. Generally, I mean... generally most most guys go to a games convention. Again, like I said earlier, they're gonna buy something that has like cars or something on it, or ninjas or robots or whatever. Gardening's not up there. So for me, this won me over on the mechanic. Plus, the artwork's nice, but I'll not take that away from it. But certainly, don't dismiss it because you think, oh, it's just gardening, it's just flowers. Don't I, do that. I think we come traditionally from a very island-based mentality and a very UK-centric mentality too, where that exposure for the games community is slightly more skewed. I think once you jump the, the water over to, to Europe, uh, or even over to the States, obviously that, that changes. So, no, I can, I can understand this as with many other games having an appeal, if games relied on the, the average view of you and I, there would be a fifth of the games in the world that there should be. Um, so fortunately, there's a much broader opinion uh, out there on that. But no, I mean, I'm, I, you know me, Justin, I'm never going to sit here and just kind of go, oh, this is awesome, this is lovely, unless I genuinely feel this is awesome and this is lovely. But... I, you will notice I am still here and still talking about it, which is a significant sign from my point of view that it's not pants. Yeah. And just for the viewers at home, I will remind them of this right now. <clears throat> Correct me if I'm wrong, Andy. Your best game of 2019 last year was a game themed around national parks. Hillwalking. Yes, because that's yeah. a good... Outdoor manly pursuit <laughs> that involved that involved photography as a sideline. So don't give me any any of your nonsense there, young man. I have no idea we what you're talking like about. Like the last five minutes here and just cut straight to this. <laughs> yeah, I'm no, I'm just gonna edit this part. However, I would say equally to give people context of where my worldview comes from, my largest game and i have no issue with large games i have a skate plan which is three times bigger than this so it's... my criticism is more for inform inf <clears throat> inform informational purposes than an actual attack on it 
I have no issue with big games, but I know that out there in the big bad world, a lot of people do. Uh, and my largest single game collection is everything that's in print and out of print for Memoir 44. So I don't see your point, Mr. I have a card game <laughs> that's literally about nothing. And it even says we didn't play test it. And that was quite evident in the gameplay. Oh, well, made millions. <laughs> It, it made millions, and that makes it okay. That justification works a lot of ways. Folks, it's been a pleasure. We've kept you for over 30 minutes, uh, nearly 50 minutes, which is, frankly, disgusting. But I suppose by the same token, we have sat here and mostly talked about a game about flowers for 50 minutes. So from the Wii Gamers, that can be nothing but a good sign. In all seriousness, Aggie Games, it's a lovely looking, well put together, very colourful, very bright looking game. It seems to have a very clever puzzle element and if that is your sort of thing, there is absolutely no reason to shy away from botanists. In fact, actively nip out and seek botanists. But we can't get away from the fact that botanist is a very big table space game. So, do be conscious of that if you're looking at this. Take a look at how much table space you're going to need and if you can accommodate it because you may need a larger growing bed to let this one be added to your collection. You're all out of puns now. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I'm, I'm weathering here. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> quick, cut, cut me back, Justin. Justin, it's it's about time you and I shuffled on here, I think. All right. Bye bye, All mate. Right. See you later. And ch folks, thanks for tuning in. Hit subscribe. Go on. It won't kill it won't kill you probably. I mean, do we need to qualify that now? I mean, you could subscribe and actually kill them. No, I think we're safe. We're good. Yeah, hit subscribe on unless some mad kidnapper has wired like I don't know, some sort of bomb to the subscribe button and if you click it, it'll actually detonate. If if they have, don't don't do it. Just go away now. I'm tired. Bye. <laughs>